You can be at no loss to understand the reason for my journey, Miss Bennet. Indeed, you are mistaken, madam. I am quite unable to account for the honor of seeing you here. Miss Bennet, you ought to know I am not to be trifled with. But however insincere you choose to be, you shall not find me so. A report of an alarming nature reached me two days ago. I was told not only that your sister was to be most advantageously married, but that you, Miss Elizabeth Bennet, would be soon afterwards united to my own nephew, Mr. Darcy. Oh, I know it must be a scandalous falsehood. I instantly resolved on setting off for this place to make my sentiments known to you. If you believed it to be impossible, I wonder you took the trouble of coming so far. What would your ladyship propose by it? At once to insist upon having such a report universally contradicted. Your coming to Longbourn to see me will be taken as a confirmation of it, if indeed such a report exists. This is not to be borne, Miss Bennet. I insist on being satisfied. Has my nephew made you an offer of marriage? Your ladyship has declared it to be impossible. It ought to be so. But your arts and allurements may have made him forget what he owes to himself and all the family. You may have drawn him in. If I had, I should be the last person to confess it. Miss Bennet, do you know who I am? I have not been accustomed to such language as this. I am almost the nearest relation he has, and I am entitled to know all his nearest concerns. But you are not entitled to know mine, nor will such behaviour as this induce me to be explicit. Let me be rightly understood. This match to which you have the presumption to aspire can never take place. Mr Darcy is engaged to my daughter. Now, what have you to say? Only this, that if he is so, you can have no reason to suppose he'll make an offer to me. The engagement between them is of a peculiar kind. From their infancy, they have been intended for each other. It was the favourite wish of his mother as well as hers. While she was in her cradle, we planned the union. And now to be prevented by the upstart pretensions of a young woman without family, connections or fortune? Is this to be endured? It shall not be. Your alliance would be a disgrace. Your name would never even be mentioned by any of us. These would be heavy misfortunes indeed. Obstinate, headstrong girl, I'm ashamed of you. I have not been in the habit of brooking disappointment. That will make your ladyship's situation at present more pitiable, but it will have no effect on me. I will not be interrupted. If you were sensible of your own good, you would not wish to quit the sphere in which you've been brought up. Lady Catherine, in marrying your nephew, I should not consider myself as quitting that sphere. He is a gentleman, I am a gentleman's daughter. So far, we are equal. But who is your mother? Who are your uncles and aunts? Do not imagine me ignorant of their condition. Whatever my connections may be, if your nephew does not object to them, they can be nothing to you. Tell me once and for all, are you engaged to him? I am not. And will you promise me never to enter into such an engagement? I will make no promise of the kind, and I but must beg you not to importune me any further on the subject. Not so hasty, if you please. I have another objection. Your youngest sister's infamous elopement. I know it all. Oh, he's such a girl to be my nephew's sister-in-law. Are the shades of Pemberley to be thus polluted? You can have nothing further to say. You have insulted me by every possible method. I must beg to return to the house. You, you have no regard, then, for the honour and credit of my nephew. Unfeeling, selfish girl. You refuse to oblige me. You refuse the claims of duty, honour, gratitude. You are determined to ruin him and make him the contempt of the world. I am only resolved to act in a manner which will constitute my own happiness without reference to you or to any person so wholly unconnected with me.